Pennsylvania weather is killing me, guys. Well, I'm working on the studio again today. You'll notice my background on my Tuna Studio looks a lot more like a digital dash. I've been playing around with that because what I'd like to do is make a digital dash with a Raspberry Pi and replace these uh, antique gauges. <laughs> so uh, I've been working on the uh, stewed more. Uh, obviously you can hear the fan running. The uh, computer is actually uh, running that right now. We'll see that temperature uh, come down and hopefully click the fan off. So, um, yeah, I got all my fans lined, uh, wired up, and actually I'm going to kill this. So, you'll notice I have this pressure switch wired up to my brakes. So, it's only on the back brakes, so when I'm doing a burnout, it's not going to be active. But if it, essentially, what I want to do with this pressure switch is activate my two-step rev limiter so that I can uh, launch this car. So, it doesn't look like a regular brake switch. Um, the reason for that is the uh, this one is adjustable. You can see a little hole and there's a little Allen screw in there. Um, the reason I didn't go with a pressure switch like you see right there, which that's the switch that activates my brakes, my brake lights, um, is because this is a much higher pressure pressure switch. So I basically have to be like really on the brake pedal, which you should be when you're trying to spool up the car on the line. Um, I have to be really on the pedal for it to activate the two-step, and it also makes it um, release a lot better. So, um, yeah, you'll notice I still haven't addressed this guy. <laughs> Ignore that. Um, but anyways, um, so essentially this guy will release my uh, two-step at a very high pedal position and um, that will make the car launch better. So essentially I'll pull up to the line, hit the brakes really hard, floor it, and then wait for the Christmas tree to come down. It'll build some boost and then I'll launch. And that'll be configurable obviously. I can change my two-step up and down with my computer and um, essentially that'll make the car launch or uh, not launch uh, hard and hopefully not break any axles. <laughs> so um, just wanted to do a, a quick update. I'll, I'll go through the, uh, the what it sounds like and sit here on the pedal and let you guys listen to it. And, and then after that, um, I'll give you a little tour of what I'm proposing for the digital dash. So. So that's what I'm proposing for my digital dash. Obviously I'm going to mount it up here, but I'll kind of give you guys a 
little preview. So essentially it's a Raspberry Pi 3 and I have the uh, 7 inch display that they sell and I made some anti-vibe um, mounts here so that I can attach it to my dash and it won't vibrate like crazy and that's essentially it. Now you'll notice in the previous video that we built about four pounds of boost and let's not drop this. <laughs> um, so that's that's I think what we can expect. So the compromises with this are it takes a little bit of time to boot. Um, it's it's about 35 to 40 seconds before it boots up. The other thing I haven't figured out yet is um, when you double tap this it goes to not full screen and when you double tap it it goes to full screen. So yeah this is a touch screen. Um, what's annoying is when it boots up it doesn't go automatically into full screen so I need to figure out how to make it do that. Um, how I figured this out was I basically looked up a guide from uh, um, a couple of guys, um, one of them Grubs Racing and uh, I forget what the other guy's channel was but basically just followed their guide and they uh, guided me through the process and I'm pretty happy with how it is turning out so next step will be to cut this guy well, I'm thinking about taking out my gauges, of course, since I'll have a uh, wheel speed sensor, and then cutting it out like this, and making a, basically making a plate, and then laying in my digital dash. Some of you might cry because it's a original Studebaker dash, but it's not in the best shape, so... Guess what? It was a $200 car. Get over it. <laughs> All right. So that's that's the two-step and the digital dash. I'm looking forward to trying both of them out. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So I wanted to bring up one last thing. The A comparable unit to this with a 7 inch screen like an AEM CD7 is going to be around 15 well $1400 and the reason I'm willing to compromise with this is it's it's yeah it boots slower yeah it it doesn't boot into full screen which I could probably fix I'm willing to deal with a little bit of heartache because I basically have right around $150 in this. So I'll take my, <laughs> my, you know, $1,200 and dry my tears and deal with it. So just wanted to talk about why I was willing to compromise. And um, anyways, we'll get this mounted up and... Uh, Catch you guys.